Now, whenever you're working on wheels, whenever you're working on painting, balancing, putting tires on, whatever, there's one tool. And I have to, again, thank Pokey for donating it to our cause. It's our wonderful wheel balancer. And we have worn this out. One of the most used tools in the shop. Now, I always, I always try to, uh, I guess, share the information. When I tried to paint wheels many, many years ago, and I tried ways of putting them out on the end of a broomstick or a pipe, or you'd need your friend to come over and help you hold it, whatever. And uh, since we have the wheel balance, and to be honest, it's made it just that much easier to do this. We have used this tool for many, many years. I'm not sure what they cost, but if it's at Harbor Freight, it's probably free if you have the coupon. Has anybody that, anybody like us that's cheap? But anyway, we don't want to spend that money. What I wanted to show today, we prepped this wheel up in the last couple of sessions. Maybe three sessions, I don't even know. Time is time has just been flying by here. But the next step on this is we want to get this. It's we just had a powdering of snow last night. It's definitely going to be a good day to get some primer on this. And then once I have the primer, it's really to my advantage to let it dry in a garage because then it dries slow. At the end of the day, I'll bring it in, put it by the heating vent, and it'll, it'll just bake that right on. And then tomorrow or the next day, we'll be ready to sand the primer. Now, just before I take this outside, I, there's, a, there's a really good test you can do. And if you're going to work barehanded, you take a, a piece of very thin plastic or I, a rubber glove is even better because it'll, this makes your hand a little more sensitive to finding rough spots. And in this case, I know there was some on here and I know we prepped the wheel and everything, but I, now I've had a fresh cup of coffee and a, and a time to look at it. And because I know this is the side I'm going to see, by the way, I took a paint stick, a little bit of sticky back paper, and I'm just going to try to clean up and then I'll re-prep these edges. The reason is the more time I can get this to the way I want it now, it's just, it's like building a foundation for a house. Anything I can do to make my life easier, the sanding the primer is going to be a big job. It's kind of an all day job once we get this primer on here. But the primer, if you don't let it sit overnight, good luck. You don't get the quality of the job that you really should. Now, there's still some casting marks in here. And I find if I'm doing this the day I do the actual prep, I, I always miss something. The next morning when I come back, I look and I go, oh, I well, because you're tired at the end of the day. Now I'm, you know, loaded with energy. Loaded. I'm, maybe I'm just loaded. <laughs> Now, I noticed, I did notice when I was putting this up here, some rough spots. So there's no point. I may as well dress off the whole area. We're not in any rush to get outside. It's not going to get any warmer. It's 26 degrees, 28 degrees. When I went out to switch the battery tenders on the bike this morning, it was, it was brutal out there. But summer's coming. Anyway, there's a couple little spots up here, and this stick is the is the best way I know to get down in some of these little nooks and crannies. <sighs> Having a wheel balancer covered with tin foil is a good thing. Just makes it at the end of the job. I always wipe it down with a little bit of urethane thinner or acetone, just make it a little bit easier. And one of the feedbacks that I've gotten from people that we correspond with and share this information with, they were trying to do all this sanding with, with the end of your fingertips without sanding tools. Sanding tools, you know, I'm, I'll probably at some point in time just going to make a dedicated video for about 10 little sanding tools that I have in my bucket over there. Hand sanding tools. You can make them all for all, no money at all. When it comes time for like this detailing part of the job, and without the detailing, 
you know, to, if you're going to do a job like this and you're not going to do it like really at a high level, what's the point of even doing it? That's what I think. But an ordinary paint stick, some sticky back paper, you're a good friend. Another tool that I always like. This is the roll sticky back sandpaper comes on. What happens? It comes on a big roll like this. You eventually peel it off and it gets smaller and smaller. So here's what I'm saying. If right now we have three rolls, one of almost three totally different diameters. So by having a different diameter, what this is going to allow me to do, there's some spots on here. And I was just getting tired at the end of the last session. You got to remember, I'm a senior citizen. So I get tired, I need my naps. And so every time you can find a tool that you can use. Now, if you need a little bit bigger diameter, eh, this is a little too big still. Well, we'll keep that for the future. No, it, we can use this one. Now, especially on the areas that you're really going to see, you know, the parts that you're going to see eh, a little bit, but there's some areas on here and, and doing the hand prep just before you prime it, there's another advantage. Is if you do this prep work and then you let it sit for a week, the aluminum oxidizes. So it's always the best of all worlds if you can do this and then run right outside and prime it. There's always a little bit of an advantage to doing it that way. Now, one of the things worth passing on, and you keep in mind, I've been painting things for a lot of years. One of the things I always wanted to have is the best possible primer you could buy. Now, I wound up buying this at Gavin's, and this was, I'm going to guess, $15 a can, $17 a can. Supposed to be a very high-end primer. I didn't like it at all. I wasn't happy with the way it sanded. I had some of this, which and I still have a little bit left in this can. Vlad had brought some of this over. When we did the Benelli, I didn't. This was this was the worst I've ever had. I didn't like that. That really, and I'm sure he paid a lot of money for it too. Then we tried a, a self etching primer. That it's a Sherwin Williams self etching. Again, I tried the filler primer, and I went to AutoZone and bought the ones that fill and do body work and everything. But for doing wheels, for doing anything aluminum. Actually, for doing anything, this is the one. Sometimes you can get it for $5 a can, $6 a can. It's not real expensive. This is the one I like to use, and it just turns out it's the least expensive, too, all at the same time. And if you let it dry 24 hours, it sands like butter. Now, there took a couple of tricks with this, though. You don't want to put on 10 coats of this and use it like Bondo. The idea of the primer is it etches the aluminum and you want the thinnest layer possible that you can get to smooth out the surface if it goes into little sanding scratches and whatever. But at the very end, you want, if you could have it, just the thinnest possible coat underneath the paint. And this, is, this acts like a binder, like a glue. Now, because we do a lot of our, a lot of our painting, we, we basically do all of it in cold weather. The trick is, another trick you can use to your advantage is to leave the part, in this case this morning I left it sitting under a heating vent, warm the part as much as possible. If it's cold in your workshop, you can use a hair dryer or a heat gun to warm the part. But you want it warm because when we take it outside, here's what I don't want to happen. I don't want to be priming something that the surface itself is 26 degrees. I'd like the surface to be about 70 degrees. And what I've done in the past, I had my little uh, laser thermometer, and I'd put the, I don't want to put the part outside and then go have coffee. I want to put it outside and immediately get the primer on it as soon as possible, because it is cold out there. Now, one of the final things is to, aside from back masking this with tape and tin foil, is I've got a bolt that I know this diameter, because we've used it on other wheels, the, this is the curvy girl diameter, and I want to just wrap tape around, Gorilla Tape, until it's a nice tight fit, because I don't want this to be concentric when I put the curvy girl valve in. I don't want to see an unpainted surface, so 
it makes a nice seal it's just a nice little detail touch and as I said before there's no point in my eye there's, there's no point in doing this if you're if you're gonna skimp and see now that's a little bit too tight all these little details count and the people that don't see this well that's okay they can <laughs> that's we could still be friends that's for sure but but the people that do see it I know they appreciate it now that's gonna hold that right in the center as I tighten a nut on this that'll hold that in position for the time that we do the job now I just need to back mask this center and we're gonna be ready to paint now this is about how much I would go out onto the rim on both sides before I mask it I don't really need that edge but I want to have the paint wrap around on both sides I don't the, the the look I don't want to have is just pretend this was the tire and right at the very edge it's got a fuzzy line I'd like to have a razor edge where the paint ends and the tire begins that's one of the goals of doing this and a final prep on this I'll wipe it down one more final time and I have seen people that just paint the whole inside of the wheel off I guess you could do that I prefer to do it this way it's subjective I don't think it would make any difference but just something about doing it this way old school I guess all right we're all back masked out everything's ready to actually the, just the final wipe get off any fingerprints that are on it make sure it's plenty warm okay the final wipe the temperature I just checked is just gone above freezing, so we're about, I'm going to guess, and we may need a hairdryer to uh, pre-warm this a little bit. We'll see when I do some detailing, but even a final, the final wipe down just before you paint, important, because you always do get fingerprints and things on it. Gloves have stuff on it, there's stuff in the air. It's just that much less work we have sanding it and it'll be a lot of work sanding the primer and in this case this is the front wheel that I'm gonna hopefully when people look at the bike they'll be uh, they'll be looking at a piece of real workmanship hopefully time to go out in the tundra most important thing of course shake shake Sonora shake the can it's just a little bit of snow on the ground, just just like you uh, took a salt shaker. Wow, we were supposed to get some real snow last night. That would have that would have uh, befuddled our program a little bit. And this I know is going to be an area that you see, so I'm trying to disguise it that it's a rough casting as much as possible. The other trick with primer, it's always. Don't try to put it on all in one big thick gloppy coat like you dipped it in a paint bucket. Better to just, just what I'm doing, just little spritzes. The first time Glenn painted something here, I remember he was just painting away, but he picked it up right away. It's always tempting to just, just keep putting it on. Again, I'm trying to get in there. Another trick is always start with a fresh can. Use up the, the, the second can you have, use it up on a third can. But when you start with a fresh can, the nozzle is always nice and clean. Just a little side, a little side trick. All these areas we want to get in. I'm not sure how this is going to play out until we actually get done with it. Another thing too is while the paint is in this stage here, just to keep spinning the wheel is to your advantage. I call it babysitting, but it's that's probably a real word for it. Somewhere in the future, what, what I would probably be a good idea if I could make it is a little motor, like a rotisserie, that this would constantly turn. 
at some very low RPM. And that would just prevent any drips you have. Now once I get everything from this side, and I'm trying to minimize around the edge the minimum amount of paint. Because when we put the tire on by hand, we really don't want to have a, uh, a big glob of paint, or definitely don't want to have more than we need. The thicker the paint is, the more prone it's going to be to run. Just save a little bit of sanding. But even if we do get a run in this, one, if you let it cure overnight, it sands out beautifully. Okay, that first half, that, that's about as good as it gets. Now it sat out in the garage for about six hours. I brought it in. The heat is on in the house because of course it's cold. And I'm looking, I don't see any runs, any spots we have to worry about right now. I think if we just let that dry overnight, next time we come back to work on this, we'll have a day of sanding primer, detailing it out. But so far it's coming out pretty good. kind of a little touch up. The advantage of an airbrush is that you don't get a lot of overspray on everything. But this will this will kind of round out the, our 750 project. The wheels are black now. We've got the even green stripes. Tomorrow we'll assemble a bike. Okay, so here's what I wanted to share. I don't want to sand it. I just want to take a little bit of silver polish just to break the edge and work that in there. And this is the kind of thing I could watch TV or I could, you know, watch MotoGP while I'm doing this. But this will just break the edge. Oh, perfect. Because this paint is really only about, uh, well, less than a day old. And I've heard all these things from people that really truly are experts and own body shops and everything that you can't buff the paint out at certain times and you can buff it out at certain times and under certain shop conditions and humidity conditions. And but the problem is every time I paint something, the humidity is different, the shop conditions are different. I'm different. It, it's just pathetic. But, but we do. What, what, a lot of people, I guess, it slips by a little bit anyway. And again, it doesn't matter. We're using Blue Magic, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter what kind of polish you use. And I've said it before, toothpaste is okay. All these high expensive things, yeah, they're good. But in relation to the price, I'm not sure. Now, this is, this is really inexpensive polish that I get at AutoZone, and I found it to be as good as the $30 stuff. Maybe even a little bit better, I don't know. I'm not sure. Since I'm not selling any of it, I can be relatively honest.